Hi, everyone. Today, I'd like to read you this book called Let's Celebrate Special Days Around the World. I found this book about a year ago. Not sure why it's taken me so long to read it to you, but one of the things I'm going to admit is that this book contains pronunciations of lots of holidays that are celebrated in different countries around the world. And I'm not really great at different languages. So <clears throat> that said, part of learning is trying and putting ourselves out there. So I'm going to do my best to pronounce the names of these special holidays. And maybe you can learn along with me. The book does show us pronunciation, so that helps. But I'm very interested in how people from other countries or other cultures celebrate their holidays. And that's why this book appealed to me. So let's see. I hope we enjoy it together. Let's bake some treats. Let's light the lights. We just can't wait for fun days and bright nights. Celebrate special days in 13 countries. Let's see. You are invited to Kodomo no Hi in Japan, Spring Festival in China, Mahariki in New Zealand, In Nireme in Peru, Carnival in Brazil, Midsommar in Sweden, No Ruz in Iran, Passover in the United States, New Yem Festival in Nigeria, No Goat in Russia, Eid Al Fitar in Egypt, Dia de Mur in Mexico. I think I need to practice that a little better, and Diwali in India. In this occasion for this book, I'd like to read you the author's note because I found it interesting. There are so many celebrations and traditions in the world, more than one person could experience in a lifetime, and far more than one book can contain. Not everyone from a culture or a faith observes the same traditions or celebrates the same special days. Some traditions span many countries and cultures. There's a big world beyond this book. As you read, ask yourself what each special day has in common with the others in the book. How many connections can you find? Thank you for coming to this celebration. Katie De Palma. Here we see all the pronunciations of the holidays I just tried to pronounce. I'll do better. <laughs> Let's bake some treats. Let's light the lights. We just can't wait for fun days and bright nights. Looks like lots of festivals involve food. That's one thing I'm noticing. Different kinds of bread. On Kodo no Hi, let's see if I pronounce that right. Kodo mo no Hi. We get quite a treat. We unwrap oak leaves and find rice cakes to eat. The fish flags that we hang represent family. My father, my mother, my brother and me. Bright New Year lanterns we hang up outdoors. Wish us happy spring festival. Good luck galore. Midnight arrives and the fireworks begin to chase away winter and let springtime in. I love the idea of a springtime festival. I live in a part of the country where we have four seasons and sometimes by the end of the winter, I'm really ready for the springtime, flowers and warm weather. So I find this Chinese festival very intriguing. 
we reach Matariki when nine bright stars arise. We gather by firelight, eyes on the sky. It's an earth oven feast when the dawn lights appear. We let go of loved ones who we've lost the last year. So this is a festival celebrated in New Zealand. I like the idea of having a special day when we remember our loved ones. Today, in Tiremi, the shell's trumpet blast tells the crowd to be quiet. The king's gone past. He's costumed in gold and a rainbow of shades. We give thanks for the sun on the year's shortest days. This festival is celebrated in Peru. Carnival, night brings quite the display. Our crowns burst with feathers as sequined backs sway. The streets fill with samba, parade floats roll by as dozens of dancers reach up to the sky. So Carnival takes place in Brazil. One of my very dearest friends is from Brazil, so I've heard about Carnival. And my husband's a musician and loves Brazilian music. So I think he would love to celebrate Carnival. Midsomers here bring flowers and greens. We'll dance and make crowns like we're all kings and queens. On this warm summer solstice when day stretches long, it's fun to make merry with picnics and song. Me summer is the way I should have pronounced it and that's celebrated in Sweden. Reminds me a little bit of a special day I've seen people celebrate here in the United States called May Day. I think this takes place on a different day, but May Day reminded me of dancing around a pole with flowers. Our lush Nuru's table is covered in dishes with bean sprouts and flowers and apples and fishes. We all crowd around it to welcome the spring, giving thanks for the fresh start that each new year brings. This is a holiday celebrated in Iran, or Iran might be another way to pronounce that country. One of the things I'm seeing as a theme is many of these celebrations relate to the change of seasons and giving thanks for the renewal that comes at springtime. We clean out our kitchen and sweep up the crumbs, then gather at sundown when Passover comes. Why is this night different? Our big Seder meal shows that we're glad for the freedom we feel. Passover is celebrated in the United States and many countries around the world by people that are Jewish. It's a Jewish tradition and a beautiful ceremony. It's New Yam Festival. Harvest is done. We share all the yams. The king gets the first one. Piling dishes with yams so high, they might fall. We could eat them all night and not finish them all. This is a holiday that's celebrated in Nigeria. I love the colorful costumes that people wear on this special day. Novigod, 
falls in winter and marks the new year. We welcome midnight, sharing food and good cheer. That's celebrated in Russia. We open our gifts, the tree twinkling above. We say, Snovidom to those that we love. There are things about this celebration that remind me of a holiday celebrated in many countries called Christmas. And it looks to me in the background there's someone that might be described as St. Nicholas, possibly, and the idea of the Christmas tree is familiar. So that's just showing us that we may call holidays by a different name, but they may be similar across different cultures. Today is Eid at al Fitr. Eid al Fitr blow up the balloons, Ramadan's at an end. When we spot the new moon, we say Eid Mubarak to friends after prayers. Then the smells of great three-day feast fill the air. This is a celebration in Egypt, but I also believe in many countries where people are of Muslim faith, this is a holiday that they celebrate. So as we said, these celebrations are not just specifically in the country we're talking about today. On Dia de Muertos, the Day of the Dead, we make altars with gifts, orange flowers and bread. Warm candle glows fill the graveyards with night, with light. We pray that our loved ones return for the night. Another name for this holiday is the Day of the Dead and it's celebrated in Mexico. So this is the second holiday we've heard about or celebration where we're honoring our ancestors who are no longer with us. Does anyone remember who, which the first one was? Night shines like day when Diwali, dusk falls. And we toast the idea that good conquers all. I like that idea. With tiny oil lamps, each one a small spark. When we gather, the light overpowers the dark. Diwali is celebrated in India and all over the world by people that are from India. When it's time to celebrate, we know the way. We can all come together, no matter the day. The end. So that's the end of the story. But for anybody who'd like to stay on, I thought maybe I'd read the specific details about each holiday so we can learn a bit more. But if you're pressed for time, come back another day so I can read to you some more. But for right now, I'm going to continue. So one of the things that's interesting to me is many of these holidays fall at a similar time of year. Right now, people of a Christian tradition um, are about to celebrate Easter. And at the very same time, friends that are of the Jewish faith are celebrating Passover. It doesn't always happen at the exact same time, but this year it is. And Carnival happens a little bit before that, those two holidays. Um, and then let's see what else. Kodonohi happens in May. And then Midsomar happens in June. Well, you can see the rest here. Kodomonohi in Japan, or Children's Day, has celebrated the strength 
health and happiness of children in Japan for over a thousand years. Its origins are from a festival known as Boys Day. It falls on the fifth day of the fifth month, May 5th. That's interesting because I think that that's also called Cinco de Mayo in Mexico. And that's a special day, which isn't a celebration we spoke of, but interesting that it's the same day. Um, the fish flags called Coin Obari are hung outside the home. Coin Obari are a symbol of strength and persistence from an ancient legend. Each fish represents a family member. The black magoi is for the father. The red haioi is for the mother. And the smallest fish represent the children. At the top, vibrant streamers fly, sometimes with a family crest. Families decorate inside with miniature samurai figures called yoro, and children wear paper kabuti helmets as another symbol of strength. On Children's Day, treats called kashiwamochi are shared. These rice cakes are filled with sweet bean paste and wrapped in oak leaves. That sounds like a delightful holiday. Since children are some of my favorite humans, I like that holiday. Spring Festival in China, also pronounced Chun Gi Ich in Mandarin, celebrates the first day of the Chinese lunar calendar, typically in January or February. The celebration lasts a whole week long. During Spring Festival, there are parades and celebrations in the streets with lots of lanterns and a great big dragon held above the crowds. To prepare, everyone helps clean and shop and decorate. Sweeping away last year's dust and wearing new clothes welcomes new fortune, good fortune in the new year. Red lanterns are hung along with poems and wishes for luck written on scrolls. Families share large meals together, eating dishes like fish and dumplings and rice balls filled with bean paste or minced meat called yu on shio and tan yuan. Fireworks ward off mythical neon monster who is afraid of loud noises and anything red. Well, that's interesting. That is why all the decorations of the spring festival are bright red. I didn't know that. As a special treat, children eat candied hawthorn fruits. Elders give money to children in red envelopes called hangbao for good health and happiness. Matariki in New Zealand is around June or July every year. Maori people of New Zealand celebrate when they first see the star cluster after the goddess Matariki appears in the night sky. Each of the night stars in the Matariki cluster has meaning related to natural forces like salt water, wind, or animals. Early on the day of Matriki, when it is still dark outside, people gather to examine the stars to predict what will happen in the year to come. For example, if the star that represents food that comes from the earth, Tupuanuku, looks bright, a bountiful harvest is predicted. Sacred words are spoken to ask the goddess Maturiki to guide loved ones who have died since the last Mutariki celebration into the afterlife. Food cooks on the earth oven called a hangi in Muri. A hangi is made by heaping stones in the bottom of a pit with a fire. When the stones are hot, 
food wrapped in flax leaves or wet cloths placed on top of the stones and then the whole thing is covered with the earth when it which traps the heat and cooks the food when the food is taken out steam rises to the sky as an offering to the stars then everyone enjoys a, a wonderful feast Inti Rami in Peru falls on June 24th. In Quechua language, Inti Rami means sun festival. Cities throughout South and Central, uh, Central America celebrate Inti Rumi, but the largest gathering and most dramatic performance of the tradition is a traditional Inca ceremony by the indigenous actors in Cusuco, Peru. At Kori Concha, the Temple of the Sun in Cusco, a large shell called a pututu is playing, silencing the crowds for the Inca, the king. The Inca addresses the sun at the main plaza outside the temple. He thanks the sun for blessing the people. With his queen, the Koya, he leads the parade through the streets of Cusco to the fortress Sakiwaman. The Inca and Koya are carried on their golden thrones. Thousands of people gather at Sakiwahuman to watch. The Inca praises the sun and gives a speech. The musicians and performers praise Inti, the god of the sun. Inti Rami is observed by indigenous people in towns in Peru, Ecuador, and beyond. People don bright costumes to enjoy music and food together in praise of the sun. So, so far I've noticed one of the things in common in many of these celebrations is food, very specific food depending on the celebration. People tend to dress up in special outfits. And often I've heard mention of music. Those are all wonderful things that we do when we celebrate together. Dress up, eat good food, and play music. Carnival in Brazil is the season of parades and parties that takes place every February or March. This celebration is the last day of food and fun before Lent a solemn season of 40 days in the Christian calendar, often marked by fasting, which means not eating at specific times. The costumes worn for carnival parades use eye-catching feathers and sequins to stand out in a sea of vibrant outfits. Festival floats for carnival can sometimes be three stories high. Carnival parades move to the beats of samba. Samba is an energetic, rhythmic Brazilian music and dance style that has roots in West African traditions. That's due to the fact that many people from West Africa emigrated to Brazil, so their cultures share some things in common. Samba schools are schools for drummers, dancers, and performers to learn the samba. School groups spend almost an entire year preparing for carnival. The groups compete with one another during the parades, dancing for the gathered crowds and a panel of judges. They're graded on costumes, music, and the theme of their dance. Carnival sounds like a wonderfully fun and exciting celebration. Miss Sumar is celebrated in Sweden in late June on the eve of the summer solstice. Summer solstice is the longest day of the year. People travel from towns and cities to the countryside to celebrate Miss Sumar. People enjoy singing and folk dancing around a maypole. Oh, remember, I thought that reminded me of a maypole. 
sorry, people enjoy singing and dancing around the maypole. It is decorated with greenery and flowers. One popular misomer dance done around the pole is called Sma Go Radam. Sorry, need to do that again. Sma Gro Dona, or the little frogs. Picnics include herring and boiled new potatoes and other special food. Everyone enjoys summer's first local strawberries with cream for dessert. Swedish strawberries are very small and sweet. People decorate homes with things that grow only in summertime. Some believe those plants have special powers. The flower crowns people where on Midsommar are said to bring love and good health all year long. Why wouldn't you wear a crown of flowers if it brought you love and good health all year long? Nowruz is a Persian festival celebrated in Iran and countries around the world by people of many faiths. Nowruz begins in March on the vernal equinox when spring begins. It is about new beginnings cleaning away the past year and starting fresh. This is another theme I've heard in several of the celebrations. Can you think of which other ones talk about starting fresh? No ruse begins in, oh, sorry, I said that already. <laughs> People clean their homes, wear new clothes, create a half scene table. Half scene means seven S's because the seven traditional items from the table start with the letter S in Persian, but the half scene table often has more than seven items. The table includes items like sprouts and apples and garlic, vinegar, coins, hyacinth, and a red spice called sumac to represent ideas like life's sweetness and bitterness, wealth and health. Families gather often at the home of the oldest family member as a sign of respect and celebrate the moment of the spring equinox. So this is another holiday that's tying in the, the moon, I'm sorry, the sun um, in the equinox. We've heard that in some other celebrations. For 13 days, wow, that's a long holiday. 13 days, people enjoy dinners and reflect on the year ahead. On the last day, those celebrating take the sprouts from the half scene to the closest river or stream and allow them to float away, letting go of the old and welcoming the new year. I like that tradition. Passover in the United States or Pesach in Hebrew is a Jewish festival observed worldwide. It celebrates the Jewish people's freedom from enslavement in ancient Egypt. According to the story of Passover, God sent 10 plagues to Egypt to try and convince the ruler of Egypt, the Pharaoh, to set the Jewish slaves free. Passover is named for God passing over the houses of the Jews to protect them during the 10th plague. When the Jewish people eventually fled Egypt, they did not have time to wait for bread to rise. Because of this, during the eight days of Passover, only unleavened bread, which means bread that hasn't risen, is eaten. Passover celebrations start with a service and a meal called a Seder on the first and second nights. To prepare, the family gets rid of any unleavened bread, cleans the house, I think this is the third time we've heard of a celebration including, including cleaning the house. 
than sweeping the crumbs away. Some people wear a yarmulke or a kippah, a small head covering worn as a sign of respect. And everyone usually dresses nicely. The Seder follows the Passover story as it is read from a book called the Haggadah. A decorative Seder plate or kara holds symbolic items for Seder service. New Yam Festival in Nigeria. Festivals celebrating the yam harvest are observed throughout West Africa. One of the largest celebrations can be found among the Ibu people of Nigeria. The festival is called Iwaji, Iriji, or Ikiji in different dialects of the Igbo language. It takes place when yams are harvested between August and October. They are the first crop harvested and their bounty lasts throughout the year. The night before the festival, old yams are cast aside or eaten to make way for the new harvest. During new yam festival, the harvest is presented to the king or the oldest member of the community. It is his job to offer the yams to God, the ancestors, and the yam God. He thanks them for giving plenty to eat for the year. The king eats the first yam because it is believed that he is the in-between for the community and the gods. Then everyone eats together and celebrates with music and dancing. So here's another one, food, music, dancing, gratitude. That's also a common theme. Novigod in Russia is observed in Russia and other places on December 31st. Families often celebrate until January 7th when Russians observe Christmas. At one time, the Soviet government did not allow religious celebrations because people were unable to openly celebrate Christmas. They enjoyed their Christmas traditions on New Year's Eve instead. Today, Novigod is celebrated by people of many faiths and backgrounds. Many of the symbols and decorations for Novigot resemble those for Christmas. I, I noticed that when we read about this celebration earlier. Although their roots are actually in Nordic or Slavic traditions. Diet Moros or Grandfather Frost is said to bring gifts to children with help from his granddaughter, Seeker Ochka the snow maiden. New Year trees are called yolka, are spruce or fir trees decorated with lights and ornaments, sometimes topped with a star. Decorative nutcracker figurines are also pub popular for Novi Goat. Families gather together for dinner of many courses and make wishes when the clock strikes midnight. To wish one another a good year, people say, snow vide mm, Sorry, here we go again. Snow vin godom. I welcome anyone to correct my pronunciation. I'm doing the best I can. It's really fun to try. <laughs> Eat al futur celebrates the end of Ramadan, an important month in Islam. Muslims throughout the world celebrate this day. Ramadan is a holy month of fasting during the ninth month of the Islamic calendar. Muslims fast from dawn through dusk for 30 days to remember the first time the Quran 
the central holy text of Islam was revealed to the Prophet Muhammad. Eid al-Fitr means festival of breaking the fast in Arabic. People wear new clothes and share gifts with each other. It's also customary to be generous to those in need that day. It's a religious day with many prayers and traditions for the families. Prayers are held in mosques and also outside with prayer rugs in some places. Like Egypt, balloons are released into the sky when prayers end. After prayers, families visit and might go to the cemetery to remember the dead. So this is at least the fourth celebration we've heard about where we take a moment to think about our ancestors. People greet each other with the Eid Mubaknak, which means have a blessed Eid in Arabic. The festival typically lasts for three days, but celebrations can go on all week. Di de Morteros comes from the indigenous Nahu cultures of Mexico, which include the Aztec people. In these cultures, the dead remain part of the community and it is thought to be important to remember them. In homes and cemeteries, ofrendas or altars are created to welcome spirits back to the land of the living. Ofrendas are covered with marigolds whose bright orange shade is thought to guide souls back from the afterlife. Water, food, salt, and bread called Pandemuerto are left for the spirits after their long journey. There are candles for each relative who has died along with the photos and personal items. Burning incense is thought to be a way to clean the air and lift prayers up to the sky. Small painted skull figures called cajalaviras are an important symbol of Dia de Muertos. Muertos. Decorated calaviras made of sugar are often given to children and people dress up and paint their faces to resemble the calaveros too. People hang carefully cut paper flag decorations called papil picato, Spanish for pierced paper. They represent the nature of life, beautiful and fragile. Diwali in India means row of lights in Sanskrit. It is a festival of lights that is enjoyed around the world in the largest celebrations held in India. Many religions celebrate their own form of Diwali, Hindu, Sikh, Jain, and Buddhist faiths. Though there are many versions of this celebration, the common thread is the victory of good, light, over evil, dark. Diwali lasts for five days at the end of October or early November. On the first day, rows of candles or oil lamps called diya are set up. Rangoli, bright designs made of sand and rice flour are also created at home. Rangoli brings good luck. Patterns might be passed down and repeated for generations. The second day is for shopping and cooking. The third day is the darkest of the lunar calendar. Daya are lights to worship Lakshmi, the goddess of wealth, and brings light to the darkness. 
On the fourth day, families share a meal called unakut, which means mountain of food. There must be a lot. The final day, Baidush celebrates the bond between brothers and sisters. The end. Well, I hope you enjoyed all those details and I'm sorry if it went on a little bit longer than you'd expected. But the one thing that made me really pause when I was listening or reading to you all these different celebrations is I'm reminded that although all over the world, we come from different cultures and we may look a little different from one another and we may experience different day-to-day um, interactions with people. But reading about all these different celebrations reminded me that we are all much more alike than we are different. The way we celebrate may have different intricacies or, or specifics, but it seems like the common bond is we're celebrating gratitude, new starts, kindness, helping others. I just loved this book. I hope you enjoyed it too. Come back soon so I can read to you again. In the meantime, I'm going to go back and read about these holidays, their celebrations, because I want to learn more. Have a great day, everyone. Thank you for joining me. Bye-bye for now.